Good morning, my name is Jeremy Miranda. Welcome to this webinar from BioMIT. Today, the session, will, we will talk about the tracking delivery status on goods sent by just one click. This uh, example that we are going to learn how to use today will be using only B1 usability package. So if you are already a customer, you will be able to create this functionality with no additional models needed. But let's uh, talk about this scenario. Imagine that we have a customer that 90% of the deliveries, uh, they ship the, the articles, the packages using FedEx. I mean, this is FedEx because I have this tracking number already, but of course you can use DHL or another company in the case you need it. Imagine a customer calls, calls you and uh, they want to check the delivery status. Hey, have you shipped my, my package? Uh, when am I gonna receive my items? Do you know the status? Well, uh, normally we will have to open SAP in the case we have the tracking number in SAP, we will have to open it or search, I don't know, in the paperwork we normally have in our desk, open, uh, in this case, for this example, the FedEx website, uh, open, copy the, the tracking number, let's, uh, let's do it. You have to copy the tracking number and then search. So, for example, in my case, it's in Spanish because I'm located in Mexico, but I already have a tracking number, so I can check the status. In my case, it was already delivered, but this is a step that I have to do manually. But how can we do it automatically with only one click using B1 Usability Package? Well, the first thing that I will recommend, that I would suggest, is to create a user defined field to store the tracking number. Because normally, in the reference number, we add, for example, the purchase order of the customer or another important reference. So I think it will be better to create a user defined field that it's numeric, that uh, you can create with the length that you need. So you use the default, uh, the standard. Uh, B1 uh, SAP Business One functionality, so you can create this user defined field in their tools, customization tools, uh, user defined fields management. So in my case, I already have it. I'm gonna open my SAP Business One. I'm gonna open my sales AR model and open the delivery. I'm gonna view the user defined fields, and as you can see, I already have a tracking number. In my case, since I'm gonna interact since I'm gonna use this number for for a universal function or an extra functionality which is the example we are we are going to do I need to add this user defined field into the main screen so I'm gonna do it using B1 usability package I'm gonna put this field under the delivery date so I already have it I'm gonna create here uh, a delivery I'm going to paste the tracking number that I uh, already have. I think I created quite a small. Let me do it uh, with a larger or extend the large length of my field. I'm going to open my marketing documents. Yes, let's update it. Let's say it will be 20. Okay, so um, only my services are connected. I don't know why it's only, okay, 11. Let's see if it works, if it's enough. I'm gonna open the delivery again. Let me let me select the customer. No, it's not enough. Well, we can use uh, another field. Let's try with this serial number, for example. Uh, in the case of this example, well, uh, you need a, a biggest number, but I'm gonna use this serial number and then I replace it. It, it doesn't matter. So now the next thing that uh, we need to do is to create a button. This will execute our functionality. To create this button, we are gonna use the standard B1 usability package functionality with a right click in the screen, add function buttons to this window. You can name the button the way you like it. And uh, before I save this button, I would like to mention that uh, if we want to create this example, uh, we can use it with two different ways. We can create a universal function type external launcher, or you can 
use the standard uh, buttons configuration window to use it as a parameter to open the web browser. Uh, let me show you how it works. Basically, when you open the, the, tracking, the tracking number of FedEx in this case, you can see that there is already a predefined text over here and then the tracking number I provide. So I'm going to delete this tracking number. So I'm going to leave it uh, until the equal sign. So I'm going to copy this value. OK, I'm going to copy this value. And as I mentioned, there are two ways to create this functionality. What I can do is uh, I'm going to create this as an external launcher. This is a button that is an external launcher. And I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to use the arguments. I'm going to use the arguments. This is the arguments for my button, for my external launcher. And I'm going to use uh, the text, you know, the website I copy from my, from my web browser. And I'm going to, using BYU Solid Package, I'm going to copy the, the field ID. I mean, if I have it here in serial number, I have it here in tracking number. Or if you use the customer reference number, you just need to copy the system information. In this case, if I get the mouse over the field, you will see that this is the item BOYX um, underscore two, or I can use the item number 14, for example, and this is the field uh, BOYX underscore nine. So the field that you have the tracking number, you will copy the syntax using the dynamic syntax. So I can obtain the value and then paste it over here. So this dynamic syntax here in this function with the, with the external launcher directly will replace this number with the value of this field. If you want to learn more about the dynamic syntax, you can open our help center, type dynamic syntax, and you will find an updated guide of how to use it. And of course, uh, this guide includes the additional functionality for SAP business, for B1 usability package. So I'm going to create this button. This message is because I, I already have a configuration for, for this screen. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to open the delivery. Here is my button. So I'm going to create this finally. Remember, I didn't create the, my tracking number field uh, long enough. So that is why I'm going to use another user defined field, but it's basically the same. I'm going to paste the value over here because I imagine I copy from from my uh, sales order. It's, it's basically the same. So here I have values. Of course, I have mandatory fields. Uh, continue, yes. Already have a value here. I already created a delivery with the tracking number that I needed in my screen. So it's going to take a couple of minutes to create the document. And then we can continue with the example. So now that I have my delivery over here with my with my tracking number in a user defined field calls a number and ignore the, the label, uh, I'm gonna click on tracking number and as you can see, automatically it opens my web browser, send the 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 website address directly with the tracking number and only when what with one click, I'm gonna open it again, only with one click I can check my delivery status. So this is the first example using parameters in a button, but let's talk about the external function, the universal function type external launcher. Uh, it is very similar the, the, than the thing that we just had here. Let me just right click, edit function buttons on this window, okay? I'm going to select, instead of external launcher, I'm going to use universal function. I'm going to remove the arguments. And let's create a universal function. And as you can see, there's also an option to use external launcher. I'm going to add here a name. And in the arguments, I'm going to 
paste the same arguments that I had here in my button. The thing that I will suggest in my personal experience is that I prefer to use a, a universal function because if you want to link it, for example, to a button, here you have, but uh, we are going to see in a few minutes as well how with a double click you can also execute this, this function. So also uh, I like the universal function type external launcher more because you can predefine which uh, web browser you're going to open. In my case, it, I open the default browser, but imagine you want to use always Internet Explorer. So Explorer is here selected. I'm going to replace my arguments. I'm going to create my universal function that is going to appear here. OK. And now you can see that my button works as well using now this uh, web browser, using Internet Explorer. So I prefer to create a universal function because I can also create validations with that function and execute it. So if I do a right click over here, over the tracking number that I have, I'm going to add a B1 validation configuration. When this item is double click, I'm going to create this validation configuration. So when I do the double click, it's going to do the trick. I'm going to search for my tracking example. Here it is. I'm going to validate that this is the correct universal function. Yes, with my Internet Explorer. And I'm going to add this B1 validation system. So basically, doing a right click, I select the event double click, the double click. So it doesn't matter uh, the form, if it's in OK, add, or update, it doesn't matter. When you do a double click in this field, in this form, the form is the delivery window. As you can see, the universal function is, is going to be executed with the same result. So if you don't want to create a button, that's fine. The cool thing about using a universal function type external launcher is that you can execute it in a uh, multiple ways from a button, from a, maybe you want to execute it with a right click menu option if you want, or with a double click or with another event, or maybe this is a user defined field, you want to add a golden arrow over here, you can also do it using the item placement tool. So when you click on the golden arrow, it's going to open again the, the website, it's fine. So as you can see, there are multiple options to execute this functionality. One thing before I, I finish this webinar is that I would like to mention that uh, I'm using FedEx for, for this example, but imagine that you use uh, different shipping types instead of FedEx, you also have UPS, you, you also have here, like here, Motor Express. Well, you can create a B1 validation system. So when you do, for example, the double click, according to the shipping type, it's going to execute the universal function that you want. So you can create a universal function for FedEx, a universal function for Motor Express, and a universal function for UPS Ground. So it doesn't matter that you have different shipping methods, that you are going to use different tracking numbers, different types. It doesn't matter using the B1 validation system and the universal function and the universal functions type external launcher. You can create your different conditions and execute them uh, according to the selected shipping type. So the user won't have to, you know, change the link or open a different website or you don't have to create different buttons according to the to the tracking number that you have. No, you only create only one single field for the tracking number and then automatically according to shipping type it's going to open the, the correct uh, website. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. It was a short one, as I mentioned. Thank you so much for joining these sessions. Remember, the webinars are not over. We're going to have different sessions. Uh, you can open our website and subscribe to the next sessions. Thank you so much for the, your time.